G'day, Ben Futrell here. How are you going? Today, we're going to be talking about what separates successful businesses from the unsuccessful ones. And I'm guessing that you're going to want to do what most successful businesses do. Uh, of course, throughout this uh, video, if you've got any questions, you can pop them down in the chat comments down below if you're watching live. If not, I uh, will come back and answer them lately. Now, I call this eight business growth hacks, but really, uh, that's just to get your attention. They're just eight fundamental things that any successful business would do. And it will get you thinking about whether or not you're doing these things and if you need to change something about what you're currently doing to get better results. So let's dive straight into it. Um, the very first thing that I've seen, I've been coaching now for 20 years. I'm in my 20th year of business coaching. And the number one thing that I've seen from people that are successful is that they have really clearly defined, clear goals. And so the first thing to do is ask yourself is, do I have really clear goals of what it is I'm trying to achieve? So sales targets, number of units I'm going to move. Uh, you know, what does your business look like when it arrives at a certain point? So think about maybe the end of the year or the end of the financial year. Have you got clear goals of what it is you're trying to achieve in that given? period of time and if the answer is no then that's the first thing that you need to do is make sure that you're really clear uh, about what it is that you're heading for what your destination looks like now this will do a few things it'll give you clarity so you know when you're doing your day-to-day -day tasks you can say is this helping me get to that that clear goal is it helping me achieve that goal the second thing it'll do is it will motivate and inspire other people around you so if you've got a really clear goal and it's uh, you know mapped out as to what it is you're trying to achieve, and it's meaningful, and it will inspire uh, other people around you, get people really enrolled and inspired in your vision and what it is you're trying to achieve. So clear goals is the number one thing that I think you need to do. Uh, the second thing that I've seen people do that are really successful in business is they have really define the roles and responsibilities in their business. Now, I call this the machine view, and your business has different machines that need to have you know, different outcomes or responsibilities. So for example, you know, your first machine is the marketing machine or the lead generation machine, and its role is to generate qualified leads. The second machine then is the conversion machine, and its role, for example, is to take the leads from the first machine and convert them into a customer. Uh, that would mean your third machine is then about delivery, so making sure that you deliver, uh, you know, good quality, whatever it is you do to that customer. And then the fourth machine is the machine that makes sure that the business is all systemized, it's profitable, and it works efficiently and effectively. So, you know, that's four machines. Now, you could look at that as roles and responsibilities, marketing, sales, operations, and finance, and admin. Uh, you could look at it as machines. It doesn't really matter. What I've found is those that are really highly successful have really clearly defined each of the different roles and responsibilities and that way that they can they can have somebody operating each machine. Each person that operates as a machine can then be accountable to the results of that machine and they won't get distracted worrying about other machines. And if you think, I, I like using the machine view because it's sort of like a, you know, like a production line and you know one machine is not going to be working on what the next machine is doing so it helps people get that delineation in what they're responsible for and what it is they're meant to be doing um, it also helps with the third point that i know a lot of successful well every successful business i've ever worked with has got key performance indicators so once you've got a machine a clearly defined role it's easier then to say that that's what this role is responsible for and you can give it a set of kpis or k performance indicators key performance indicators so you know for example let's say the first machine is lead generation its key performance indicator could be how many leads it generates in a given period of time uh, it could be the cost per lead you know the acquisition cost per lead uh, it could be the type of inquiry or lead you know so it can have these key key performance indicators that tell you whether or not that machine is performing at the level that it needs to uh, you know, sales KPIs could be things like conversion rates, number of new clients that come on. So each machine can have very uh, descriptive KPIs that make it easy for uh, uh, whoever's being held accountable for that machine to be able to understand when they've done a good job or not. So K KPIs are really important. Okay, number four uh, of my eight growth hacks is to have 90-day action plans. So, you know, having a business plan is one thing. Uh, and business plans are great because, of course, you know they give you some sort of strategic direction as to where it is you're heading. But a 90-day action plan is more operational. So it's about what do we have to do in this next 90-day period and uh, who's going to do what by when, who's responsible for it, what resources do we need. So starting to think about your plan in sprints. Okay, so rather than the whole 
the you know the big goal that we talked about in in point one uh that can be overwhelming right but if you just have 90 minute sprints where you know that in the next 90 days you've got to achieve these set things then you know that you're more likely to achieve them because it's not so overwhelming it's also easier for your team because instead of them you know trying to understand this humongous goal that you've set you're maybe going to be the you know dominate the world with whatever it is you do instead of that what you're focusing on is what do we just need to do in the next 90 days and i typically say to people in a 90 day action plan three core things that you're going to be happy to achieve in the next 90 days 90 days is 13 weeks it's not a huge amount of time so uh really 12 weeks of 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 you know sprinting should get you the results that you want all right, five, um, no good having a plan if it's not reviewed regularly. So the fifth thing is to have weekly plan review meetings with your machine operators. Now, that might be you. It might be a team of leaders in your organization, but you need to be reviewing your plan on a weekly basis and, and saying, well, what were the KPIs that we said we were going to achieve? Have we achieved them? If not, why not? If, if we have, great, let's keep going. Uh, let's keep doing what we're doing. If not, we need to change something and we either need to change the KPIs or we need to change the activity that's leading to those KPIs. Uh, so number five is is making sure that we review the plan on a weekly basis, not at the end of the quarter, not at the end of the year, but every single week have a structured meeting with an agenda where we go through the plan. Really important. Uh, number six is for you as an entrepreneur to stay focused. So having now coached, oh boy, oh boy, hundreds of businesses over the last 20 years, uh, I can tell you that the biggest limiting factor is the focus of the business owner. And if you are not focused on your business growth and your business is not systemized, then it won't grow. Uh, it's that simple. Unless you're at a point where you've hired management teams in and they're running it all for you and you no longer have to go in. But realistically, you need to stay focused on what it is you're setting out in that 90-day plan. So it's great to set the plan. It's great to review it on a weekly basis. But if you keep throwing in new things, unexpected things, unplanned things, then what you're going to find is that that's going to... Uh, derail what you're trying to achieve in that 90 day period. And I see this happening all the time. So, you know, being an entrepreneur by your very nature, you're going to be distracted by things. You're going to see, uh, you know, new ideas and want to implement them. I'm here to say you need to really stay focused. The acronym FOCUS stands for follow one course until successful. Okay. So as hard as that is for entrepreneurs, and I know because I'm one of them, uh, you just got to keep on that one path. So set your plan and just work the plan until you achieve the, the, the results that you wanted. Really important. Uh, number seven is to understand that there are people that can do it as good as you, if not better. And I was definitely uh, suffering from this disease. No one can do it as good as meitis. You've probably got that disease too. I call it superhero syndrome. You need to be great at delegating. So if you're not good at delegating, then you need to ask yourself, have I sufficiently systemized things and put reporting in place so I can delegate with confidence because maybe that's why or is it me is it my own mental state that's stopping me from delegating because you're worried about whether or not the job will get done or the customers want to talk to me or whatever it might be so uh, you know I think it's really important for you to identify that that may be a weakness for you and if it is then make sure that you are you know thinking about when when you take a task on ask yourself could this be getting done by somebody else is there somebody better than me that could do this in my business and if the, if the answer is yes then you should be delegating it uh, if you spend all your time working in your business that is going to actually hold you back uh, you need some time to work on your business so you know if you've got superhero syndrome identify that and say you know i need to get better at delegating i need to be able to trust my team more and work out what's stopping you from doing that and that'll make you much more effective uh, all right, growth hack number eight. And uh, I'm a bit biased because, I, uh, like I said, I've been business coaching for the last 20 years. And I own a business coaching company. Uh, but I think that, you know, if you look at any top performing athlete, uh, there's not one single top performing athlete that doesn't have a coach. Uh, I'll be happy for you to name them if you know them, but I don't think they exist. Uh, and I'm going to say the same about business owners. If you look at really successful business owners that have smashed it out of the park, got amazing results in their business, it's because they've hired a coach to coach them. And I want you to think about it like this. You know, whatever it is that you do, you've gathered this knowledge and expertise of how to do it over many years, and you're great at it. If I was going to come along and do whatever it is that you do, I would guarantee it would take me longer, I would make more mistakes, and it would probably cost me more time and more money in the end. Uh, and let, but if I got hired you to coach me to do it, you would probably get me there faster. I would make less mistakes. It would cost me less and it would be a better result in the end. So the same thing is true with building a business. Why try and do it on your own when you can hire somebody that builds businesses every day for a living and get them to help you? 
to build your business. So get yourself a business coach. That's tip number eight. Um, on that note, uh, if you do want to find out more, head across to maxmyprofit.com.au. You'll find, a, a, you know, there's a whole page on a business coaching there. It'll explain a bit about, you know, what it is, how it works. And you can also download our fees and benefits that will explain exactly how much it costs to work with a business coach. All right. Well, I've been Ben Futro. You've been absolutely brilliant for tuning in for this live. I hope those eight growth hacks were helpful and that uh, you're looking forward to growing your business. Until next time, all the best of luck with growing your business. See ya.